Now, the other thing you can do with scoring, let's say I fix some little thing in that plant. Then I can see if it really worked. Cattle don't like to go into air blowing in their face. If I got air blowing back down that chute, they will not go in. Pigs won't go in either. So you got to change the air so it doesn't blow towards them. And I changed that, and I went from 4.5% focalizing down to zero just by changing the ventilation. And they didn't have to prod them so much. Or I put a light on the entrance of a chute, and they went from zapping 38% of the pigs down to four. Because they go in. I duct taped the light on the chute entrance. I could measure the improvement. Now, this is my center track restrainer system. I've got this down at Sam Kane and a bunch of other plants. See this little non slip ramp you have right here? Well, if you watch the movie, you're going to see the same non slip ramp in the dip fat. And they actually did put that metal plate in there and it killed the cattle. That actually happened. Took it out and then it worked. I still have got people 35 years later taking that non-slip ramp off, cutting it off, taking the cleats off. It's hard for people to get their head around, give them good footing, and then they'll just walk in there. Also, I have this false floor in here, because this whole apparatus is eight feet above the floor. You see, the floor is down here. And I don't want the cattle going, ah, a cliff. So I got people taking the false floor off. They're taking all this stuff off that's on there just for behavior reason. It's driving me crazy. One of my best clients cut off three quarters of the ramp. And uh, the plant manager was telling me, oh, we didn't do anything to it. I said, wait a minute, I'm going to go out and I'm going to look. And they only had this much ramp left. It's supposed to be that long. They'd cut it off. They were jumping the cattle in there. It worked like crap. And it's a hard concept to get across to a lot of people of using behavior rather than force. This is the visual cliff effect. And this is an old, old, old optical illusion. And uh, animals can see it. Babies can see it. What's done here is this box made out of glass. One side, it's a like, checker cloth material. That, that cloth's right up against the glass. Other side, the cloth's four feet down. And the kid both the human one and the goat is not a little lamb, is not going to walk over the cliff. See, that's the fear of falling. So they take these ramps off and they take the stuff off. Now you've got the visual cliff. Now this shows how my interest in optical illusions in college helped me in my work. Because I originally wanted to be an experimental psychologist studying this kind of stuff. This is old. This was in a general psychology book in the 60s. OK, some other things. I put a light on the restrainer entrance. I go from 8% focalizing down to zero, because you don't have to prod them as much. OK, I put the false floor back in after they took it off, 9% moving down to zero, so they didn't have to keep prodding them. Now, of course, that's only with well-trained handlers that only use the prod when they need to. Reduce the pressure on a neck restrainer, 23% moving their heads off down to zero. And then there's an example of of a um, light, something, something very, very simple. Now, this won't work in an outdoor facility because the, the eyes are adjusted to the sun. This is only going to work indoors. Easy to drive versus hard to drive animals. I'm seeing more and more problems. Animals are difficult to handle. Now, we're getting the slaughterhouses really well fixed, and I'm not going to call them harvest facilities. I think that's nonsense. And when I went out to Hollywood, I use the S word. They didn't seem to have any problem with that. But some of these pigs, they're just impossible to drive. Because a pig differentiates between a person in the pen and a person in the alley. And you've got to walk through your pigs. Get them used to people walking through them. And then if you load them up on 10, times of, 10 tons of ractopamine paline, they're going to be lame and heat stressy and difficult to drive. I've seen some very bad problems with heat stress in cattle coming in lame. And we're getting things good in the plants. And this summer, unfortunately, over 100 cattle died because they had a problem at a plant, and they went and parked some trucks in the, and just let them die in the trucks. They made sure they parked them outside the USDA jurisdiction. Talk about gaming the system. Uh -uh. No, people, that's not all right. Maybe you better have an emergency plan. Like maybe you better buy a portable loading ramp and trailer and panel set. 
So you can take them to a horse arena and unload them. This plant wasn't where there was other plants they could take them. Or take them to the fairgrounds. Or take them to auction and unload them. You don't just let them die. And I hate to say it, that happened uh, this summer. Now, in disseminating guidelines, a trend now is to go with these animal-based outcome measures. Instead of telling them how to build their corrals or their chutes, they've got to achieve certain outcomes. Well, then there are some pro things you just have to prohibit. You know, no, we're not going to uh, plug the pride into the wall to drive them. That's just, there's some stuff we just aren't going to allow. And the old way of doing things was to tell people exactly how to design stuff. I've been trying to, you know, now in Europe and here, kind of getting away from that. You've got to achieve certain outcomes, like you've got to achieve certain micro counts on meat. Getting away from the input-based or engineering standards. 